This tutorial is going to teach you about the elements of art and the principles of design. The elements of art are the only tools an artist has to use to put on their canvas. They include line, shape, color, texture, value, space, and form. The principles of design are the ways that you can apply those tools. For example, you have line and you can use it to create an emphasis on something. You have value and you can use that to create contrast. So we're going to go over the elements first and then the principles of design. And you're going to draw pictures to help you remember these um, in each one of these boxes. So go ahead and copy me. You're going to need a pen or a pencil. And let's start with line. So line is basically just a point moving in space. It can vary in width, length, direction, color, or curvature. And so when you put the pencil on the page, it has to move um, in order to create that line. So point moving in space. Shapes are when those points intersect back together with each other. And so you have uh, organic and you have geometric shapes. So geometric shapes are like the ones that you would see in math class, triangles, circles, and squares. Organic shapes are free-flowing, unpredictable shapes. For color, you may have colored pencils, you may not. Um, so if you have them, you can color this in. Your primary colors are going to be um, red, yellow, and blue. So you can color your primaries in there. These primaries can make up any other color when they are mixed together. So they're the foundation of the color well. It's also another name for hue. So if someone says, what hue are you wearing? They're meaning, what color are you wearing? Another important um, element of art is texture. Is it rough? Is it furry? Is it smooth? Um, so just add some sort of texture inside of this box. Now value is the lightness or darkness of something. So you can go ahead and do a value scale that goes from dark to light as you go down. Um, space is the illusion that you can walk into a, the canvas. So you might have, and this is like a really tiny box, but let's go ahead and try to make it work. Let's see. Um, maybe we have a hill, and you have a house on this hill, and that house is really far away. But then you have a tree that is super close. And then that looks closer, you can walk on the hill and you can get to the house. And then you have form. And form is basically shapes that look 3D. So if you have a circle, you can go ahead and shade that circle in to make it look like it is popping out three-dimensionally. You have your shadow edge, and your reflected light, So you have your light side, your dark side, and now it looks more 3D. And that's basically it. The only tools that you can use on your canvas. Now if we scroll down to the principles of design, the way that an artist can use those tools on their canvas, they can use it in a variety of ways. So go ahead and just put a variety of shapes, of marks. You can be um, using the principles to create an emphasis. So basically, an emphasis means one thing is going to stand out compared to all of the rest. You can do that by adding red in one area and the rest of the canvas is black and white. You can play with, um, so that would be color, you could play with uh, size 
of different um, objects. So maybe we have one big circle and we have a bunch of smaller circles. There's an emphasis here because it looks more unique. And so an emphasis is also known as a focal point. So those can be used interchangeably. So learn both of those terms. And every artist really thinks about what's my focal point? What is the first thing that someone sees when they look at my artwork? How do I draw their eye into my canvas? The next one is contrast. So contrast is the difference between um, light and dark. If you have a lot of contrast, then you have something that gets really light and something that gets really dark on your canvas. Versus um, if this was super light and that was light too, then you don't have a lot of co contrast. Having a good range of values that goes from pure white to black makes your artwork look more three-dimensional. Then we have proportion and scale. So you can make things in proportion, you can make them out of proportion. So you have something that's big, and then maybe you play with scale to make it look like it's a little bit farther away. It gets smaller as it goes back. And then you have pattern. So pattern is um, maybe with color, or maybe it's with shape. But revisiting those same elements in um, an identical pattern of some sort. Like maybe you have a pattern for the way that you do wrinkles on a face or um, the way that you're going to do hair. You're going to have pattern in the background um, to create a different style. Rhythm is basically a visual beat when you look at it, that feeling that you get. So for here, just go ahead and draw a circle and um, draw some lines to, to kind of represent like a visual beat. Movement is the way that your eye moves across the canvas. So if I wanted to make your eye move in a certain direction, I could draw something like this, where I have bigger, smaller, small, bigger, bigger, smaller, small, bigger, bigger. And I am making your eye start somewhere, and I'm linking your eye movement up and down around this canvas. So how do I get you to look at my whole artwork? That would be movement, and it's more like an eye movement. So you can draw an eye to represent it's, it's how you're, you're dragging your, your viewer's eye across the page. For repetition, this is also how you can uh, drag someone's eye across the page. You can repeat colors, like red, in three different areas, and then the eye seeks out those similarities and makes you look across the whole entire canvas. Um, it could be um, just repeating those circles again. So smaller, bigger, and then bigger. Um, I look for that similarity of that shape and I go boom, 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 boom. So these two work hand in hand. So repeating something creates movement. And repeating it could be shape, it could be a, a certain type of texture, it could be color. Um, any one of those repeated helps to move your eye across the page. Then you have balance. And um, so think about if there was a canvas um, on your wall, and this was your canvas, and on one side of the canvas you had a giant circle. Maybe it's a really dark giant circle. If that was hanging on your wall, it would look like it's going to fall off because it looks like it's visually too heavy on this side. So then how do you balance it? Do I have to put another symmetrical one or can I do a series of two smaller dots but together they would equal the visual weight of the larger dot? So thinking about your whole canvas and making sure it's balanced visually. And then you have 
positive and negative space. You always want to think about both when you're drawing. So let's go ahead and draw, hmm, we'll draw like a vase. The vase is the positive shape, so that's a plus sign. And then the background is the negative space. And so does your composition look good, the arrangement look good with all that negative space? Or what do you have to do? Where do you have to, to place this item um, in order to create a good balance between your positive and your negative spaces? So this is huge when it comes to composition. And composition is arrangement of the, the items on your paper. And you can also use that to check for accuracy in your drawing. If they are all working together, you have good positive and negative space, it looks balanced, um, it has good contrast. When they all work together and nothing looks funny, that's when you have this sense of unity. So we can just try to draw a quick unified piece where nothing is standing out, it all goes together it's not unbalanced, it's not out of proportion, um, everything looks right. And you know that when you look at an artwork and you say, that looks good, there's nothing I would change. And that's what we hope to gain um, as artists. We're always, our goal is to, to create unity. But rules are meant to be broken. So maybe you want to create an artwork that is not unified on purpose, um, that's okay, but you have to know your intent, you have to, to make choices in order to make it not unified. So maybe you're going to make something not balanced. You're gonna make a, a bad composition or something where you wanna agitate the viewer. But either way, you need to know the, the tools, you need to know how to use the tools, and then have that, or choose what you wanna do with an intent. Are you trying to make it unified? Are you trying to not make it unified? Um, for a specific reason. So you really need to know these and how to use them in order to communicate with the viewer.